can music help us understand mathematics? In today's video, I'm going to be showing a particular mathematical object which is maybe a little bit hard to understand if we think about it purely mathematically. However, if we use music to understand it, then maybe it becomes a little bit clearer. On the side of mathematics, I'm going to be using modular arithmetic, so let's start with a reminder of how that works. We begin by considering the group given by the integers under the operation of addition with the unit zero. Then a coset of H is any set of the following four. G plus H, when G is some element of the integers, where this set is defined to be equal to all of the elements G plus H, given that H is an element of capital H. For example, if we consider the subgroup 5Z, then we have the coset 2 plus 5Z, which just corresponds to the number 2 and then plus or minus all multiples of 5. So we get 2, 7, 12, 17, and then we also have negative 3, negative 8, etc, etc. And then if n is an integer, we denote by z sub n the set of all cosets of this subgroup nz. For example, z sub 5 is equal to the following set. It consists of the coset 5z, which you can think of as 0 plus 5z, and then also 1 plus 5z, 2 plus 5z, 3 plus 5z, 4 plus 5z. So each of these elements are sets themselves, and then z sub 5 is the set of all of those sets. You'll notice that inside this notation, the 5z is common amongst all of them, and so therefore it's superfluous notation, so we may as well leave it out. We then end up with this set consisting of five elements, and we have addition inherited from that of the integers. So for example, for example, inside z sub 5, 3 plus 4 is equal to 2. Another way that you can think about this is it's like normal integer addition, where we set the number 5 to be equal to the number 0. The reason why is because the coset 5z is equal to the coset 5 plus 5z. So what's really going on here is 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. As usual, if 5 is equal to 0, then 7 is equal to 2. A group is called cyclic if there exists a special element G, such that all elements H inside the group can be given by adding G to itself a certain number of times. And I've written that as N times G is equal to H, where N times G, of course, just means G plus G plus G dot 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 N times. Okay, for example, the integers are cyclic because for all N, an element of Z positive, n is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times and then for all n an element of z negative n is equal to 1 minus 1 minus dot 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 n plus 1 times now what I'm going to do is define two different groups for you, which are both going to be cyclic, and they also have the same number of elements inside them. And if you think about it, that means that they are necessarily isomorphic to one another. So the two groups that we're going to be considering is the one on the left, which corresponds to pairs of elements inside Z mod 3 and Z mod 4, and then the other one is going to be Z mod 12. We see that these both have 12 elements inside them, and indeed they're both cyclic. The cyclic generator for Z mod 3 plus Z mod 4 is 1, 1, and the cyclic generator for Z mod 12 is the number 1. So this means that they're necessarily isomorphic to each other. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily isomorphic uniquely. However, if we ask that the cyclic generator is preserved by the isomorphism, then there is a unique isomorphism. So to just write down a few elements of this isomorphism, since I've asked that the cyclic generators are preserved by this isomorphism, we necessarily have that 1, 1 is mapping to 1, but then that determines the rest of the isomorphism. If I add 1 plus 1 to itself, I get 2 plus 2, and on the other side, if I add 1 to itself, I get 2. So since this is a group homomorphism, 2, 2 is necessarily getting sent to 2. And then if I add 1, 1 again, I get 0, 3. And if I add 1 again, I get 3. If I just keep doing that, then I get 1, 0 maps to 4, 2, 1 maps to 5, 0, 2 maps to 6, dot, dot, dot. You can work out the rest by yourself. Then what we can do is notice that there is an ordering associated to the left-hand side, which is referred to as lexicographic ordering. 
Okay, so let me explain what that means. If you just think about Z Mod 3 itself, so don't think about Z Mod 3 direct sum Z Mod 4, just think about Z Mod 3, then that has an order naturally associated to it, where 0 is less than 1 is less than 2. Okay? The same is true of Z Mod 4, we have got 0 is less than 1 is less than 2 is less than 3. So if we combine these two orders, then we can come up with one big order on Z Mod 3 direct sum Z Mod 4, where we just compare elements inside the first sum end, and if they're equal, we move to the elements in Z Mod 4 for tiebreakers. So when you write that out, that gives you 0, 0 is less than 0, 1, is less than 0, 2, is less than 0, 3, and then you see here, that is less than 1, 0, because 1 is bigger than 0, so that's all that we need to know. Therefore, this one, this pair, is bigger than this pair. We don't care that this element over here is bigger than this element over here, because we only move to the sum end Z mod 4 when we need to look at tiebreakers. And then we can carry this ordering through the isomorphism and get an ordering on Z mod 12. Now, at this point, I would just like to pause to say that we don't actually have any reason to expect that this is going to get us something natural on the side of Z mod 12. Uh, this isomorphism is determined by the fact that it's a group homomorphism and it preserves the cyclic generator. And also, this ordering is something inherent to the left-hand side which has not been asked to be preserved by this isomorphism. So, at this point in time, we just shouldn't have any expectations for what this is going to give us on the side of Z mod 12. So here, what I have done is I've written out all of the elements of Z mod 3 plus Z mod 4, are from smallest to largest with respect to lexicographic ordering. And then underneath this, what I've written is what every single element corresponds to inside Z mod 12. And so that gives us the order that we end up generating on Z mod 12 via lexicographic ordering on Z mod 3 plus Z mod 4. So let's have a look at this because it's a little bit interesting. 0, 0 corresponds to the number 0. 0, 1 corresponds to the number 4. To see if that's true, remember that 1, 1 corresponds to the number 1, and 0, 1 is equal to 1, 1 added to itself four times. And that's why 0, 1 corresponds to the number 4. Okay, if you keep doing that, then 0, 2 corresponds to 8, 0, 3 corresponds to 9, etc, etc. And look at this order that we end up with. This is the thing that I want to be a little bit weird, which we can then understand musically. So this order is 0, is less than 4, is less than 8, is less than 9, is less than 1, is less than 5, is less than 6, is less than 10, is less than 2, is less than 3, is less than 7, less than 11. Okay, how are we going to understand this? Okay, and the key thing that we're going to do, no pun intended, in order to relate Z mod 12 to the piano, is we're going to just identify each element of Z mod 12 with one of the semitones in an octave. So we're going to take the number 0 to be C, and then 1 is going to be C sharp, D is going to be 2, D sharp is going to be 3, etc, etc, until you get to B, which is going to be number 11. Now when I do that, I can translate the ordering that we were just looking at into a sequence of notes on the piano. So it's going to give us a scale. So let's see what scale this is. Okay, so just to remind you, I've drawn out the ordering on the blackboard again. So it was 0489159 dot dot dot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what keys these numbers correspond to. So you see we have 0, so that starts off with C, and then 4, that's E, and then 8, that's G sharp. Okay, and then 9 is A, 1 is C sharp, 5 is F, and then 6 is F sharp, 10 is A sharp, 2 is D, 3 is D sharp, 7 is G, and then 11 is B. So that's our scale. C, E, G sharp, A, C sharp, F, F sharp, A sharp, D, D sharp, G, B. Okay, and now the question is, musically, which scale is this? Now, don't feel bad if it doesn't jump out at you immediately which scale this is exactly. Because, and this is kind of the disappointing part, it's not a standard scale. This is not really something that you would think about if you were Beethoven or Bach, but I can at least explain it to you in some way. 
Think about each of these triples of notes as an augmented chord. Now, if you don't know what an augmented chord, start off with a triad. So if you were to think about C major as a triad, that would be C, E, G. And what you do is you raise the fifth. So G becomes a G sharp. So C, E, G sharp is the C augmented chord. And you can see that that's right. Okay, so I'm going to denote augmented with a plus. So this is the C augmented chord. Now let's think about A, C sharp, F. Sorry, A, F, C sharp. Well, that is C sharp augmented. But what you'll notice is that if we look at C augmented, we play C, E, G sharp in that order, meaning that we go from the lowest note to the highest note in terms of pitch. But then when we play C sharp augmented, it goes A, C sharp, F. That's A, C sharp, F. So we do the highest note in pitch, and then the lowest, and then the middle one. So that's a little bit weird, but that's fine. That's called an inversion. And here it's actually the second inversion. So I'm going to write second inversion. Good. Now let's think about F sharp, A sharp, D. That's D, F sharp, A sharp. Again, that's an augmented chord. So it's D augmented but we see that we start with the middle note this time. So again, that's an inversion, and it's first inversion. Okay, and then we do D sharp, G, B. That's D sharp, G, B. And if we think about that, we see that that is the D sharp augmented chord. Okay, so really the way that we want to think about this scale is as a chromatically ascending sequence of augmented chords, and then we decrease the inversions. So. These ones don't have inversions, we normally call them root position, and you can think about it as a zeroth inversion. It's the standard way that you would play that chord. So we do C augmented, and then C sharp augmented with a lower inversion, which means it's the second inversion, and then we raise the root note by one semitone to get to D augmented, and we lower the inversion again to get to the first inversion, and the D sharp augmented to, to finish off with. Okay, so the important question to ask ourselves after all of this is, was that in fact helpful in the end? Uh, I would probably say not really, uh, but let me, let me explain why. So yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to think about that scale. I mean, if you asked me what was the seventh element inside this sequence, I probably would work it out by just thinking about that scale and then telling you the seventh note. However, you've actually reconstructed Z mod 3 plus Z mod 4. So Z mod 3 is the inversions. You see how there are three options? It's either root position or first inversion or second inversion. And then you see Z mod 4 is the bass note. And you can see that there are four options there. C, C sharp, D, and D sharp. So really what I've done is I've reconstructed Z mod 3, direct sum Z mod 4 on the piano, but I'm forcing you to think about that as Z mod 12 because I'm dumbly thinking about the piano as just these 12 notes. But I don't need to think about it like that. I could think about it like this, and now I have a conception of it in terms of Z mod 3 plus Z mod 4. So maybe it helps you understand the isomorphism or something like that. So there you have it. I did an Instagram post about this where I just gave the scale and a little bit of writing explaining where I derived it from. Uh, and that's probably not a very fair thing to do. It makes it seem like it's overly cryptic and overly mysterious. You now have a full explanation and also the uh, confession that it's not really that interesting. I think it's novel. I think it's a little bit cute. That's kind of the category that I would put it in. Uh, but no mathematician is ever going to be impressed by something like this. There are too many things that the whole thing relies on. For example, Z mod 3 plus Z mod 4 is isomorphic to Z mod 4 plus Z mod 3. And in some ways, using universal algebra, you don't even want to think about these two objects as different. Yet they will indeed give you different scales. So there, are, um, there is quite a bit of dependency on the choices that you've made, which are indeed artificial. And as I said, there's nothing really Z mod 12 esque about what we ended up with, although kind. Last thing that I want to say is I hope that you've appreciated this style of video. I wanted to strike the balance between something that was reasonably easy for me to make but is still informative and enjoyable to watch. I will try to do a video like this every weekend where I don't have a concert, I think. We'll see how that goes. If there are any suggestions for topics which you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Follow me on Instagram if you would like to see the progression of my project Obdurate. I'm also going to be posting about mathematics a little bit. I'll leave the link to that inside the description. Alright, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.